Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me on today's update on our local response to COVID-19. I'm going to provide a brief statement on where we are and uh, how we're going to move forward, updates on testing, turn, then I'll turn it over for questions. On the call to answer questions is Sheriff Mike Williams, Fire Chief uh, Keith Powers, Emergency Operations Center uh, Director Steve Woodard. Today is National Prayer Day, and I want to say that I'm grateful for the strength and the resiliency of the people of Jacksonville. I deeply appreciate uh, all the prayers from the faith community over these last number of weeks that we've been dealing with this pandemic. And I just ask you on this National Prayer Day uh, to continue to pray for our city and our people. I'm also grateful for the brave men and women of Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department, lending an aid to our neighbors in the Panhandle in their fight against the Santa Rosa Swamp Fire. They hit the ground running and have already ba battled one structure fire. Chief Powers can provide more information when we get to questions. The Florida Department of Health is reporting a cumulative total of 1,083 positive cases and 28 deaths in Duval County. Since I declared the local state of emergency for Duval County on March 13th, we've made tremendous progress in stopping the spread and flattening the curve in our community. The data demonstrates that we have flattened the curve. Positive testing rates are dropping and positive cases continue to decline. But we're not out of the woods yet, so let's continue to be responsible. Remember that the virus doesn't spread, it's set, it's spread itself. Uh, people spread the virus. One way we can help keep our numbers low is to wear masks in public spaces when you'll be near other people. Yesterday, I was on a call with healthcare leaders when one of them put it this way, I wear a mask to protect you and you wear a mask to protect me. It's a simple act of personal responsibility. So I would ask you to please consider when you're in grocery stores, close spaces with people uh, to consider wearing them. I heavily suggest you wear a mask. According to CDC, masks help slow the spread of the virus and help people who may have the virus and do not know it from transmitting it to others. I've been wearing a mask when I'm out grocery shopping or getting other necessities for my family and I encourage everyone to do the same. Because of the great progress we've seen in the last few weeks, we've been able to take initial steps to reopen parts of our city and our economy. Councilman Becton and I are working on relaxing elements of our local ordinance code to support economic recovery for restaurants and other establishments. Restaurants and retail are doing their part to abide by the 25% indoor capacity threshold set by the governor's executive order and properly social distance. In an effort to provide these businesses with additional flexibility for social distancing, early next week, my administration will suspend enforcement of the zoning code related to outdoor restaurant and retail activity until the various regulations on these establishments are repealed. That will mean more outdoor space for these business establishments to serve their customers. I believe this is a prudent step and the right thing to do, but I wanna remind our citizens to continue to be cautious in the practice social distancing. Folks should not be gathering in large groups or engaging in big parties or activities yet. I get it, people are anxious and they're eager to get this virus behind, virus behind us and get back to normalcy. Believe me, I'm with you. I wanna get back to normal as well. But we must move forward responsibly. That means being safe, it means being cautious. We can't afford to take one step forward only to be forced to go two back. We must get this right and with your continued patience and responsible behavior in the weeks ahead, I'm confident we'll be able to move forward quickly to the next phase of reopening of our city. As we move into the weekend uh, with our beaches and our parks, I uh, encourage people, again, get out, exercise, and move around. But please, as we move into this weekend on beaches and parks, be responsible and disciplined and not getting in big groups of 10 or more. Uh, practice social distancing. Uh, and, and just be responsible to those around you. One big part of our strategy moving forward is to enhance our testing capabilities. A few weeks back, I talked about a Harvard study that said in order to safely reopen, we need 152 tests per day for every 100,000 people. With an estimated population of 960,000, that would be just over 1,400 tests a day in capacity. Our daily testing capacity is exceeding that goal already, and we're working to enhance that capacity even further. Starting tomorrow, a new testing site at the Lem Turner Road Walmart will begin operations. Like the Beach Boulevard location, this testing site will be a drive-through and by appointment only. Again, that's Lem Turner Road Walmart. Appointments can be made online at myquestcovidtest.com. 
and are available to anyone exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, as well as first responders and healthcare providers. Starting this Saturday, the walk-up testing location at Cooker Park will be moving to Legend Center at 5130 Sutel Drive. This move will put the testing in an indoor location that will not be weather dependent. The site will continue to test up to 200 citizens per day and is open to everyone free of charge. Also, the testing site at Lot J will begin to offer antibody testing. You may have heard the governor mention this and we expect to have this available soon. This kind of testing will give us and citizens a better idea of how widespread this virus is by telling people if they had the virus at some point. Details for this testing are being worked out now, but right now it's reserved for first responders and healthcare workers. There will be a separate lane for this testing at the site. We'll share information that becomes available in the coming days. Director Woodard is on the call and can answer additional questions on this testing. As a reminder, we have three locations and more listed on the city website. We have these locations, these three locations and more listed on the city website at coj.net backslash COVID-19 testing. There you'll find a full listing and a map that can show you what testing locations are closest to your home. We'll continue to update this page as more testing locations become available over the next few weeks. Now on to something awesome. This Friday, May 8th at 1140 AM, the world famous Blue Angels will return to their birthplace here in Jacksonville, Florida for a 20 minute flyover honoring frontline COVID-19 responders. The flight path will cover all parts of the city so residents can watch from their neighborhoods. The route will travel from Naval Station Mayport to the beaches, south side San Marco, downtown, the west side, north side Arlington, and down to Mandarin. Thank you to the United States Navy and the Blue Angels. I know my family and I are looking forward to this and I'm sure the people of Jacksonville are excited as well. Before we go to questions, a few reminders. Make a call tonight at 7 p.m., check in with somebody that you may need to hear from or they may need to hear from you. Remember to make your mark and fill out the 2020 census. A full and accurate count is critical to ensuring our community gets the federal funding we deserve for our schools, hospitals, roads, disaster recovery, and more. It's only 10 questions and takes less than 10 minutes. Go online to 2020census.gov to fill yours out today. And of course, if you need to help, there are many resources and opportunities available. Please visit coj.net backslash recovery resources where my team is frequently updating a list with information about social services, financial relief, mental health counseling, trauma support, disaster loans, and more. With that, we'll take questions and we'll start with Paige with Action News. Hi, Mayor. Thank you so much. Uh, with the city's COVID-19 response topping 54 million, are you considering any tax increases in the immediate or near future? And if so, would those increases not only be used to help prop up the budget, but also for any downtown development projects? Well, first I say the, the last thing I'm considering at this mo immediate moment in time is putting additional burden on the people of Jacksonville. Uh, there's been tremendous economic suffering in all of this. Uh, we're going to have to, as we get into our budget cycle, which we're moving into, evaluate the impacts and make some tough decisions in terms of priorities uh, and how we allocate dollars to best serve the people of Jacksonville. But I can, again, tell you right now, uh, I, 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 am, I am looking at ways to provide relief to people versus additional burdens. Mike with the Daily Record. Yes, hi, Mayor. Um, uh, a few questions. Uh, first, uh, regarding um, the outdoor seating uh, the, uh, code enforcement uh, uh, issue, uh, what will this do for, uh, um, for restaurants that are required to have uh, liability insurance um, uh, for, uh, for, for their outdoor seating? Uh, will there be any, uh, do, do, do you think there'll be any, um, any issues with, with, their in, with their insurance on that? Um, and then also to uh, also uh, regarding um, JEA, um, it looks like yesterday uh, you you and uh, your CAO Brian Hughes have directed um, uh, your deputy CAO to testify in front of the uh, the city council special investigative committee. Um, uh, just uh, just wondering why why not uh, why not as kind of have her do that in the first place? Why wait for uh, the city council to 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 request that? Well, the first part of your question, we're working through the specifics. That's why we're going to make the announcement next week, running all the traps and making sure that uh, we relax, uh, we, we 
we open up outdoor space for restaurants and retailers in a way that they can do it in a way that they can, uh, it won't infect their businesses in a negative way, which would include their liability insurance. I would say it's my understanding that uh, our employee's attorney was working with uh, the city council's attorneys to schedule a date. Uh, I believe that was actively happening uh, when we learned that uh, there was a misunderstanding. Uh, we simply said what we said we would do and said uh, to cooperate. Brittany with WJXT. Good morning, Mayor Lenny Curry. On Cinco de Mayo, people flooded the parking lot at One Night Taco Stand in Mandarin. We know that JSO was called out. People clearly were not social distancing. Can you comment to what happened on Tuesday? Uh, yeah, Sheriff, uh, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure, Mayor. Uh, we'll take it. So we got the we got the uh, the call about that large group of people. And we're able to get some some officers out to the scene, uh, worked with the restaurant owners, worked with everyone who, who was there at the scene, all the, uh, the patrons and customers. And, and uh, just through some conversation, we were able to get everybody to comply and, uh, and cooperate. And, uh, and it worked out well, you know, at the end of the day. So we've handled a lot of incidents like that over these past five or six weeks. And we've come from the posture of, hey, let's educate the group, let's talk to the organizer. And, uh, and really to our city's uh, credit, we've had nothing but cooperation from everybody that we've dealt with uh, in those situations. Lorena with Action News. Good afternoon, Mayor. Uh, could you expand a little bit more on the uh, relaxed uh, regulations for restaurants? Does this mean that they could put tables anywhere on the property? Is it just for parking lots? Uh, what can you tell us about that? And also, do you happen to have any updates on, on phase two, particularly uh, for hair salons and, and barbershops and, and gyms going forward? Yeah, again, we are working through the specifics. That's why we'll make an announcement next week. We're working with Councilman Becton. The idea is to find a safe way to uh, allow there to be tables, sidewalks, parts of parking lots, et cetera, so restaurants can serve uh, and retailers can serve more of their, their customers in a, in a safe way. Uh, and then the second part of your question was phase two. Um, so Jacksonville is uh, getting much closer to being in phase, being able to go into phase two based on the White House's blueprint and guidelines. Uh, as far as uh, barbers and nail salons, we are currently under a statewide executive order, uh, including gyms that uh, has those closed at this moment in time. Uh, but we are working and collaborating with the governor's office and and based on their input from health professionals and industry professionals, uh, when they move to open those, uh, we'll act and move with them. Uh, David with the Florida Times Union. Hey, good morning, Mayor. Uh, the Department of Health statistics show that more than 40% of the hospitalizations and more than 40% of the deaths in Duval County have been among black residents, which seems to bear out some predictions that because of underlying health conditions that are more prevalent in the African American community, more vulnerable to serious illness. In light of that, do you think the testing y'all have in place is going to be, is enough to reach uh, communities where people are more vulnerable to grave illnesses if they do get infected by the virus? Thank you. Sure. Well, that's a good, that's a good question. From the beginning, uh, we worked to expand testing into all communities of our city. Uh, and uh, I think one of my early press conferences, I pointed out that based on the data that certain communities uh, were being hit particularly hard based on data and science. Uh, and right now we have the ability to test more than is required by, by the experts and we're gonna continue to expand. And the way we keep everybody in this city safe uh, is to practice social distancing and make sure we have access to testing. Hence, we announced the new Walmart testing site today. Hence, our, 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 our bill with our federal dollars is going to add additional testing and antibody testing so we can all take care of each other. AG with Florida Politics. Hey, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, I got a question about uh, some conflicting guidance from the administration. Um, you've talked about infrastructure spending as a way to get out the COVID hole economically, but uh, CA O'Brien Hughes talked about potential furloughs and layoffs for city employees. Um, what does the near-term economic future of the city look like? How can infrastructure be built up while laying off city employees 
uh, from departments. Uh, can you explain the policy going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there was not a contradicting AG contradiction. That was um, taken out of context, I believe, based on a, uh, a, a conversation, discussion with labor unions as it relates to our emergency order. So when we go into uh, under emergency orders uh, and we keep essential employees at work, uh, based on city policies that have been around for a very long time and based on labor agreements, uh, those essential employees uh, are paid at a rate that's, that is uh, uh, greater than their normal salary. And so when you're dealing with a hurricane, typical disaster, you're talking a week, a week and a half, that is manageable. When you're dealing with something we've been in now for two months, uh, it's not manageable. So it was simply a communication to our, our labor leaders that this isn't sustainable. We're under an emergency order. We remain under emergency order so we can get FEMA federal funding. But if we don't relax uh, some of the uh, agreed upon dollars that have to be paid out to employees in a time of emergency, it is not sustainable. So it's not that we are having a payroll crisis at this moment or, or a CIP crisis. It's doing what this administration does. And that is saying, okay, if we don't plan for this and take action now, we could end up there. Ellen with the Jack's Business Journal. Good afternoon, Mayor. Um, two questions for you. First, I was wondering if you could tell me, um, you know, have you gotten any feedback from restaurants um, on their reopening? Is that 25% capacity high enough for it to be profitable for them? And then my second question, I'm curious, as we go through this incremental reopening, would you consider replacing any of these regulations that you're relaxing um, if the spread of COVID-19 worsens? Uh, first part of your question, I was at a restaurant last night um, and I asked the question and look, they're hanging on. Uh, the takeout uh, allowed some to hang on. The 25% is a little bit better, but uh, they clearly, uh, as expected, uh, they want to have more capacity and they want to do it in a safe way. By the way, the restaurant I was in uh, people were spaced out. People working there were all in masks. Uh, it, it was it was really impressive and very responsible behavior. Second part of your question, yeah, it's possible we ought to reevaluate. We ought to come out of this thing and things that were relaxed, reevaluate uh, what ordinance and rules make sense and what don't in the era that we're in now. Brittany with WJXT. Yes, what is being done to make sure small businesses can get the supplies they need to reopen safely? Uh, what what do you mean in supply in terms of supplies? Um, just the just to make sure that they have you know equipment or anything that they need to follow the rules in order to make sure it's safe for customers employees. Sure, they ought to they ought to check our resources website that gives them links to everything, and they ought to check the CDC guidelines. And then the Restaurant Lodging Association in Florida has put out a document that we have links to, as well on our resource guide. That's the guidance that they ought to follow. I've seen those documents. They're, they're accessible and they're doable and they're manageable. Mike with the Daily Record, last question. Yes, hi, Mayor. Uh, a follow-up question on um, uh, the City Council is, uh, just introduced legislation today to appropriate uh, about $9 million to help with uh, small business mortgage uh, rent relief. Is that something that, that you would support? Um, and, and do you support reallocating those funds that were originally to go to, uh, to, to the Vice Our Loan Program? I'm not f up to date on that bill. Um, so I would say, uh, again, I haven't looked at the bill. I am in any time, any way we can f provide relief to citizens and businesses. I I'm certainly going to find a way to be for it and work with the city council. Uh, I'd have to get, again, dive into the specifics of the bill. Thank you, everybody.